All right, welcome back to Breakfast Central. Now to a conversation that has got all of social media talking. The Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Mudashiro Basa, said the state parliament will pass new property and business ownership laws in the state. Obasa stated this in his acceptance speech as a third term speaker of the Lagos Parliament and inauguration of the 10th Lagos Assembly on Tuesday. Um, stable. Lagos is a Yoruba land that's against the assertions of some people that it is a no man's land, he declared. Therefore, part of our legislative agenda is to ensure the translation of laws passed by this house to Yoruba language. Now, let's recall that many residents of Lagos were allegedly divided along ethno-political and religious lines during the last 2022 regional elections. To talk about this even further, we're joined this morning by Mr. Nelson Ukujumi, Executive Director, Center for Social and Economic Rights, CSER, to discuss this update and get, help us gain more insight on this. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning to everyone. Great. Now let's get into the meat of this conversation. Yes. Everyone is talking about it. Social media has had, has, you know, become a gog with several reactions. Some, um, of course, calling him out and criticizing this for maybe potentially fueling um, ethnic divides. I'd like to find out what your thoughts are, you know, how you felt and how you reacted when you read the speech. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, the speech is in tandem with the realities of our time. You know, the, the responsibility of the legal state of our assembly is to make laws for the tranquility of the people who live within, who live in the in communities of their constituencies that they are representing. They are not immune, you know, to the sentiment, to the emotions, to the reality, you know, that pervades, you know, their environment. And um, in juxtaposing this with, you know, present socioeconomic realities of the moment, you know, it will be out of place if the House of Assembly deems it fit to look into those issues and decide to come up, you know, with, uh, with bills that will become law when assented to by Mr. Governor on how to, you know, promote the cultural, traditional, and other practices of Lagosians, such that, you know, the acrimony that usually arises during elections or even before elections uh, that, you know, tend to promote ethnic hate, that tend to promote divisiveness, you know, can be addressed in one way or the other. Don't also forget that what the Lagos State House of Assembly is trying to do... Hold on. Yeah? Yeah. How, okay. how do these laws prevent the bigotry and the tribalism that emerged during the elections? And how does, you know, because if, if these laws are meant to, from what you've said, now protect the indigents, you know, and maybe maybe slightly infringe on the rights of persons who are not Yoruba in Lagos, how do they in any way prevent the bigotry and the tribalism that emerged, you know, when it's time for elections? Well, the bigotry and tribalism or uh, religious, you know, aids that, you know, uh, developed during our elections are things that even the Electoral Act frowns at. And uh, it's unfortunate that even till now, we have not been able to implement our laws, you know, to deal with such infractions. Uh, candidates are preaching ethnic and religious uh, division, which is against the Constitution of Nigeria, as well as the electorate. So, and don't forget that, you know, some sentiments come up during elections that are very, very offensive and repulsive, that, you know, people of the ethnic origin that inhabit the land feel insulted, they feel assaulted, and, you know, they are clamored for, like, okay, let us have a law that really make everybody to be sensitive, to be responsible, that, look, wherever we find ourselves, we must recognize that some persons, you know, are indigenous, they are bona fide owners of where we got to, because where we are coming from, we are also bona fide owners, we are indigenous of somewhere. So at every point in time, uh, every citizen, whether you are an indigenous or a settler, you must recognize your boundaries or else 
you'll be, you know, you'll be stoking. But, but isn't, know, isn't, no, 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 but, but uh, isn't that, isn't uh, that creating more tension? Because if you, if you, if you um, have lived in, in, for example, worry in Delta State for the last 20 years or the last 25 years, maybe the last 40 years, and then a governor, you know, decides to remind you that you are not an indigent, you know, because they are trying to win an election or trying to, you know, remind everyone who really owns worry in Delta State. You know, isn't that creating more tension instead of doubting the tension? Because I'm sure that you would agree that the tension that, that um, arose prior to the elections and then during the election and post-elections needs to be sorted out, not, you know, to be, to be further, you know, stoked. Don't you think so? Well, as a Yoruba man, I think you must recognize that we have our traditional practices and, you know, customs. And no matter the civilization, no matter how long you have lived in the land, you know, as a settler, I'm sure if you have lived in worry, even if you like, if you have lived in worry for 50 years, uh, none of your, you know, uh, progenitors or people coming behind you can ever become the ruler of worry. The Olu of worry uh, kinship is reserved for, you know, is reserved for the indigenous and they have their customs and they have their rules how they go about it. So you won't say because I've lived in worry for 50 years or I've lived in Sokoto, oh, let them abolish the, the traditional institution such so that anybody can aspire. Is that how it happens in your own place? Don't forget, we have an international organization that is also promoting cultural, uh, religious, uh, cultural, relig cultural and religion and other practices. We have to I'm, I'm, I'm actually because glad if you know, we don't address. I, I'm glad that you've mentioned cultural and religion. Allow me to quickly interject here, and this is still in line with the question that my colleague just asked. Um, right now, it's been a bit of. Yes. A, there's been some sensitivity in the country. There's been a report of a speech allegedly given by the former governor of uh, Kaduna State, Malam Nase El Rufai, and of course, this is of something that may have some have said have um, stoked the fires of religious division because it did seem that what was being pushed in that script was a Muslim Muslim ticket and how that should be the norm in Nigeria maybe for the next 20 years. And while some have frowned against that statement and now we're having this you know in the in Lagos State and we're having Mudashiro Obasa you know talking about making laws to protect the indigent. Do you maybe think that now would be the time for the APC as a party to come out and take a stand and to assure Nigerians and to sort of let them know that their fears are maybe unfounded or they have nothing to fear? Shouldn't this be a time for the government to not just speak up, but show actions to show that it's an all-inclusive government? Hello? 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 Did you hear the question I asked you, sir? Yes, I heard your question. I heard yeah. your question. Please go yes, ahead. I feel this is the time. Yes, don't forget the Lagos State House of Assembly is not representing is not a representative of the APC as an administration. That house represents the generality of Lagosians. And but the speaker, house, I even has mem. Uh, hold on, the house also has mem. The speaker is the spokesperson. The speaker is the spokesperson of the house. Is the image of the house. The what house party is he two, from? Two members from the Labour Party. Pardon? Uh, what, what party is the speaker from, sir? The speaker, his party. The party is from... The, pick, the speaker is from APC. Okay. But the speaker is speaking as the representative of an arm of government, which is called the legislature, which is not colored in party you know, affiliation. The speaker is speaking as the, the speaker of the House of Assembly. He's not speaking as a member of APC. Right. So he's not speaking as a member of the APC, we do agree, but he is a member of the APC and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, there is party, you know, the party would be in some way, or I, it seems we might have disconnected from uh, our guests, we're hoping that you're able to connect. But, yeah. you know, um, Osalge, these yeah. are conversations that have been ongoing and, you know, there have been people wondering, all right, great, I'm, I'm glad that you're back. So do you think maybe the, the speaker himself should come out and give a speech? Now, so it's a twofold question. The speaker, do you think he should come out to give a speech yeah. to allay the fears that many Nigerians have expressed in this time as regards how this might, you know, you know, might cause some divisive ethnic fires 
and also the APC as a political party. This is looking at it on, you know, on the global level, uh, on the federal level rather, with regards to the statements made by uh, Malam Nasir El Rufai. This is, of course, a, a different conversation. Well, for your information, we know those who are soaking the embers of ethnicity and religion. We have evidences of those who have made statements in those regards and, you know, who have been caught, you know, pants down. What no, the speaker has uh, done uh, is uh, in tandem... Mr. Ikujimi, please, can you clarify, can you help us clarify who the people are making these uh, stoking ethnic, ethnic tensions here? Politicians, there was even one, that, there was even a presidential candidate who was caught uh, in a leaked video speaking to a, a, a religious leader you and I know, you and I know that that video was fake. That's one. And then two, well, you, no, you and I know that that video was fake. That's one. And then two, in the build up to the elections here in Lagos State and across the country, you and I, I'm sure also know, maybe we might, you know, differ on this, that the, the conversations concerning your Lagos, my Lagos, you know, no man's land or not no man's land, was started by the APC. Those were some of the things that were started in the build-up to the elections and even post-elections. You and I also know that the violence that was meted out to people here in Lagos State was not done by foreigners, wasn't done by people from Edo State or from the Southeast or from anywhere. It was done by indigenous or so-called indigenous of Lagos here against Omoibo, as they were popularly called. These are facts. You know, it's not, it's not things that we should argue about. And so who do we blame for stoking the tension in Lagos? You, you're not going to blame people who, you know, just wanted to vote, are you? Okay, we also okay. have video clips of MC Oluomo. You know, you, I'm sure that you watched that, where he, of course, was threatening people who are not of Yoruba you know, extraction, you know, about com, um, against coming out to vote. You didn't criticize him. I don't. I, I didn't hear any any, uh, any time where you criticized him, did you? Hello. Uh, can you? You have uh, landed. You have you know landed yes. with your in submission. Please. Can, can you just spare me a minute or two? Please go ahead. Please One, go ahead, sir. Is that the video? The video of the Labour Party presidential candidates. Immediately that video broke. Two spokesperson of that candidate said. Yes, he made that conversation. I wonder where you are getting your own story from. That it's doctor. That he don't also know where that addressed it. Is focused. Hold on, just hold on. Now you were speaking. You know, I, I, you, you let us have a conversation, and not, you know, and not a debate. You know, when he, the news broke, some, some of us who were very conscious of the fact that you know we are in an era where information are concocted, where information are twisted, we held our breaths. But before we could say, Uri, his spokesperson came out and said, yes, the video were true. What they are saying is that some part of that, some part of that audio was doctored. He came out and denied it, only for him later to come out and said, yes, I spoke to the, uh, the, Reverend, the uh, clergy, but I didn't use those words. And in another video, he said, whatever anybody likes, let them say about the audio that he, he, he has left, left them with that. So please, you are not a spokesperson for him. You are not authorized to, you know, make an, a, 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 a confirmatory statement on that video. He himself has, has attested to it. And the, 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 the producers of that video, he threatened taking them to court. And as we speak, because I, I, even as small as I am, if I am, if I am slandered with that type of audio, I will sue. But as we speak, he has not done it. And when he's threatening that, the producers of that audio dared him that come go to court and we'll meet you there with this, uh, with more evidences of videos like of audio like this. That is one. Secondly, the issue about the, the Omonile or uh, or uh, Ibu, Don't forget. I don't know if you are conversant with our political history. We have had a recurrence of this from time immemorial. You recollect in 2015, when the upper of Lagos became so infuriated and he gave a, an order. I'm, I'm sure that wasn't in 2023. So don't, be, don't uh, come on air and speak as if this problem just started yesterday. Mr. Ekujumi. No man's plan. Even Mr. Yes. Nelson Ekujumi, I think you will agree with me yes, that 
this conversation is one that requires uh, further expansiation. We need a part two on this conversation. And I think that we should all calm our horses for now because the bills have not yet been rolled out. We don't know what the content of the bill is or what the bills would be. And as they are rolled out, absolutely. then we can start absolutely. to look into the details of what the bills provide for and know how we can channel this conversation. I hope that you'd oblige us when we ask you to come back to the show for the conversation again. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you.